Hi friends! Today is going to be the TBR takedown for the month of December. It's also going to be our wrap up for December, but that's a whole other thing. Hello! Welcome! If you are new here, the TBR Takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my unread physical TBR shelves down from a really high number to something more manageable, probably around 50. At the beginning of December, we sat at 117 books. Here's where things are going to change up a little bit. January's video is always different uh, because I do a physical count of every book on my TBR because always at some point during the year a number gets off somewhere. I unhaul a book I forget about or I buy a book I forget about. Things happen so I always do a recount at the end of the year and then even our number out from that despite whatever the number is going to say at the end of the video. Also because I'm trying to do a little less this year I am going to incorporate my wrap-up videos into my TBR takedown. So I will be, instead of just listing the books that I read at the end like I normally do, I will actually be doing my wrap-ups at the end of this video. So for the foreseeable future, I don't know if it'll be the whole year or um, I may not do it every month if I have a month where I read a shit ton of books, which I'm not expecting to do. But if I do, um, I would separate them. But um, if I'm just reading like five to eight to ten books then I'll probably just do it in the takedown. So now that we've got all of that going and talked about and discussed this month's gonna be crazy. I'm unhauling a lot of red books actually. Things that I've decided not to continue on series with. Books I didn't really enjoy the first time I read them. Um, there's a whole heckin ton of books stacked next to me. So let's just get started with the takedown part. So as I said, our number starts at 117. Uh, as always, I go through my purchases first. So let's hit those up. Yeah. So this month, um, I actually didn't have any purchases other than book boxes. So the first is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. Um, this is an adult. It involves a vampire. Yes, a woman marrying a vampire. She doesn't want to marry him. He's like a king. Is he the king of vampires? I don't know. It's something like that. I know it's very spicy. I know it's obviously um, someone's trying to pull in some Jennifer L. Armentrout fans here um, with this cover and title uh, because it looks like it's part of that series. It's not. Um, this is an Adrian and Isolde novel number one. So it's probably part of a series. Um, I've already heard some things about this. I don't know that I'm going to enjoy it, but it's here and at some point we will read it. And the only other book I hold this month is Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. I'm not a hundred percent sure what this is about. I read through the synopsis on the inside and it seems like it's about a girl who lives in a world where dreams, nightmares rather, become real on the new moon. Full moon? New moon. New moon? New moon. Um, something about magic makes the nightmares come to life and they have to protect the townspeople from that magic from their nightmares something like that um, and there's like a territorial dispute and I, as I like to do I love how these things wind up here at the end um, from acclaimed author Rebecca Ross comes a rich and nuanced story about vengeance family and the captivating power of dreams so I don't really know what this is going to be about because I'm not 100% certain from that synopsis. But anyway, it's here. We're going to read it at some point. I don't know. It's very pretty. Speaking of being very pretty, it also has, you know, because it's the Alcrate. So next we're going to get into the wrap up portion of this. I read seven books in December for a total of 1,842 pages, which means I read some short books in December, but happy about it. I did read a couple of rereads this month, so we will talk about those first. And we're just gonna talk about them at the same time because it's Dash and Lily's Book of Dares and The 12 Days of Dash and Lily by Rachel Levithan. Nope, by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. These are books one and two in the Dash and Lily trilogy. I think originally these were a 4.25 and a four stars. I still really love these. They're still one of my favorites to reread at Christmas time. I love New York and Christmas time. I don't know why. Why is it a thing that we love? I don't know. Uh, we read 
Dash and Lily's Book of Dares for the AuthorTube Chat Book Club this month for November, December. And I will link it in the description box down below if you want to know more of my full thoughts on the book itself and some of Kate's thoughts as well. I really enjoy this trilogy. The first two books rereading was fantastic. I have said before, like in the first book, I definitely felt like the teens were just like too verbiage. They're very much like John Green's teenage characters where it's just like that's unrealistic in any way shape or form. But on this, this read through with my nieces being older now, they're in like the 15-16 age range, I can see that some are definitely like this. Some of my nieces, one in particular, is very articulate and very intelligent and does speak in a lot like Dash. So I can see where that comes from without it being like, a, oh my god, this is so unrealistic. I guess you just have to find the right teenager. And now that we're done with the rereads, we will start with the rest of our reads and we'll go in order from lowest rated to highest rated. And the first is Mangoes and Mistletoes by Adriana Herrera. And I gave that a 2.25 out of 5 stars. It is a novella that is like a baking championship romance where two girls meet at like this baking competition. So for me, I felt like A, this was entirely too short to be enjoyable. I wished it had been like a full hundred pages longer. And part of that is because it's very insta lovey, which I don't like. I don't feel like the Bake Off portion was a large enough portion. Also, there was some drama in the Bake Off that wasn't ever addressed. And so like that didn't really work for me. I didn't necessarily enjoy the main characters. I didn't enjoy the third act plot twist. Um, I did not like the pacing. Like there wasn't <clears throat> there wasn't a whole lot about it that I did like. I liked the idea and I liked Adriana's writing as far as like the way that she like strung a sentence together. There was just a lot about it that I didn't like unfortunately and for me the big thing is like it really just felt like somebody needed a reason to write some Christmassy smut which is fine if that's what you're looking for but that's not what I was looking for. I have been directed to some other works by this author that I will check out in the future because again I did like her writing style so I will check out more of her books in the future just maybe not the shorty shorty short ones. Okay <clears throat> this next one pains me. You will have seen this book in last week's end of the year wrap up. Uh, when You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. Uh, this is about a girl named Millie who has like a Mamma Mia situation. She's always lived with her dad and her aunt. She does not know who her mom is. Her mom left her with her dad when she was very young and she finds her dad's live journal from 2004. Oh my god we're so old and we could have teenage children. It is fucking creepy. Anyway she finds her dad's live journal and she sees like reading through all of this stuff and finds that there are three different women who could be her mom. And so she decides to find a way to implant herself into their lives to try to figure out which one her mom is. And the story just kind of snowballs from there. I gave this a 2.25 out of 5 stars. I have loved Emma's work in the past and really enjoyed the way that she the way that she does her the teenagers have an issue but also the adults have an issue as well and brings in that adult aspect to it. I love that she does that and that is one of the things that definitely stood up for me here as well. Um, this is my second biggest disappointment of the year. Um, again you will have seen that in last week's video. I really didn't like Millie. I, I could not stand her character even after the character progression because the point of a book is to at least usually for the character to learn something to change to grow like it's there's supposed to be a lesson that both us the reader and the main character learn throughout the book typically and for me even after Millie's change and as she was changing I still could not stand her. I did not like her character and so it was just really weird to be in the mind of a character that you just didn't like. And I don't DNF a book because I hate the main character because again that's kind of the purpose of the journey but there was a lot of this book that I really just did not want to read and I did end up skim reading the large at least probably the middle half. Like I read the first quarter and was like okay not enjoying this but I kind of want to know who her mom's gonna be. I had a good idea at that point. I was right by the way. I skim read like the middle of it the 50% in the middle and then the last 15% I actually read through. And so really when I sat down and rated this I think I rated it like a 3.25 or 
2.75 I don't remember which and then I knocked it down to a 2.25 because I didn't actually read the whole thing all right um I feel like if I skim read something regardless of what the pointage was at the end it deserves to have some pointage taken down because I didn't actually read it I skim read it okay I didn't really enjoy the plot I knew what I was getting into like I knew it was like a Mamma Mia retelling and I was like that's fine but there were a lot of things about the plot that I just did not enjoy I didn't like the love interest I hated that like the way that we meet the love interest and you know from the second that you meet him but he's gonna be the love interest and the second that you meet the mom you know she's gonna be the mom and like again this is written for teenagers so maybe they won't have guessed the things that I guessed but it just didn't work for me that's okay I will keep reading her in the future there will be many more Emma Lord books for me this is just not the one and that's okay I then read My True Love Gave to Me which is an anthology of short stories uh Christmas time and I gave it a 3.25 out of 5 stars. The highlights for me, and I'm going to read these from my phone because otherwise I will never remember all of these names. The highlights for me were Welcome to Christmas California, The Girl Who Woke the Dreamer, and Polaris is Where You'll Find Me. And I really enjoyed those. I think they really embodied that Christmas feel. I think that they had like good plot lines, good story structure. Enjoyed. Um, the ones I did not like were The Lady and the Fox, Angels in the Snow, your temporary Santa, and beer buckets and baby Jesus. Those are the ones that just kind of fell flat for me. And honestly, the rest were just okay. And so that's why it kind of sits at a 3.25. It was all right. It wasn't the best thing I ever read. wasn't the worst thing I ever read. And that's typically where anthologies fall. The reason why I continue to read anthologies is because there are books like Welcome to Christmas California and The Girl Who Woke the Dreamer and Polaris is Where You'll Find Me that really hit really well. So I highly enjoyed those. Overall, it's a good Christmas collection and you could read it at Christmas time. It would be great. We then have Mind the Gap, Dash and Lily, again by Rachel Cohn and David Levithan. This is the third book in the Dash and Lily trilogy. I gave this a four out of five stars. I loved this. I love these characters. For me, this one didn't have like the same plot that I've loved in the previous books, but this one doesn't necessarily take place in New York, it takes place in England. So there's not quite as much of like that New York and Christmas time feel that I love, but there were definitely things in here that were enjoyable and that I did enjoy. Um, enjoyable and did enjoy, obviously. I like that our characters are growing up. We get to see more of them like moving forward in their lives. There were a lot of things in here to enjoy and I did like it. I don't know if there will be any more books after this, but I hope that there are because I'm not ready to let Dash and Lily go quite yet. And our final book, we're not going to talk about a whole lot. It is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I gave this a four. Well, I don't even know what I gave it because I didn't write that down. What was it? A four and a half, four and a five, four and a... I don't know. It ended up on my favorites of the year list. So obviously I enjoyed it. There is an entire reading vlog for this that I will link in the description box down below. It's my blind date with a book video. Um, this was my blind date with a book and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was fantastic. I loved it. I have a full review video. Check it out. Okay, now we have a lot of things we're going to talk about and I'm going to try to move some books around without throwing everything in my life off kilter. First things first, I am taking some books off of my TBR that are still technically unread but are not going to count against the physical unread TBR. I am doing this because they are books that I do plan at some point to read but they're like either nonfiction or something that like I'm gonna have to sit down and spend more time with or they're just like companion novels to other things. Sorry if the camera moved angle, I had to do some things, come back. Anyway, um, these books are coming off my TBR but what I did was I do have some collections, um, some bind ups of things that I've only been counting as one book like Holly Black's uh, Modern Fantasy Trilogy. I've previously only been counting that as one book, but as some of these came off, I have then transferred those to two. It's, it's a hot mess. So again, this is why the end of the year count is very important. Uh, so the books that I'm taking off are Tales of the Slayer, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is just stories and things from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I don't need to actually count this as part of my unread TBR. Will I ever sit down and read this? I don't know. I got it super cheap and just wanted to pick it up because Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, you know, it's fine. Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes by Rick Riordan. This is basically, I think, just like different stories of different Greek heroes. So it's like a bind up 
of different tales from Greek heroes. I don't really know but the point is I'm never gonna sit down and just read this whole book. Will I sit down and read it at some point? Yes. Will I read like little bits and pieces of it at times? Yes. Uh, mostly because I love mythology but I'm never just gonna sit down and read this whole book in one sitting so I am going to take this off of the physical TBR and just read it at my leisure. The Invention of Murder. How the Victorians reveled in death and detection and created modern crime by Judith Flanders. Again, this is one heck of a chunkin' book that is nonfiction. I'm never gonna sit down and just read this whole book from beginning to end. It's gonna be something that I'm going to like read bits and pieces of over time. It may be like a year project. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but I feel like having it on my unread physical TBR is a disservice to myself and to the numbers I'm trying to get to. So it's coming off the TBR. In the same vein, The Witches, Salem, 1962. Nope, 1692. It wasn't 1960, it probably was 1962 also, but not quite that far, uh, by Stacy Schiff, because there's a sticker on the front blocking the name of the author. So this is, I'm fairly certain that this is nonfiction about the witches from 1692 in Salem. Um, again, not going to be something that I sit down and read all the way through, something that I'm going to take my time with and kind of read over and learn about things. Um, I tend to not count nonfiction as part of my physical unread TBR because I don't ever just sit down and read an entire nonfiction in one sitting. I am definitely that person who like will pick things up, read a few chapters, set it down, do something else, come back to it. Um, it's not something that I read for fun. It's something that I read when I'm trying to learn something or if I'm doing research or looking something up. So again, this one, setting it aside, not counting. I do have other books on my shelf that are unread that I have not been counting towards this. Um, we've talked about it in the past. I have some um, classics that are like library books that I bought for sale in the library that I may or may not ever read. Um, but you know, they were a quarter, so I picked them up. Um, I have like this chunker swashling tale of a treasury of swashbuckling adventures that's all pirate stories by I don't know the same author multiple authors looks like multiple authors like I'm never just gonna sit down and read this and so having it on my physical unread TBR is just super weird um the other one that I have is this beast um tales of Washington Irving um no never gonna sit and read this whole thing so for me, it seems weird to keep these on my physical unread TBR because it's probably going to take me 20 years to read this. I'm trying to make myself feel better. Just let me do it. It's my game and I want to feel better about it. First book that we're going to take off of the TBR that is an unread unhaul, which means I'm unhauling this book. I've never read it. It's going away and I'm never going to read it. That is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. What I have learned about myself over the past couple years is that I cannot handle this content. So I'm not going to pick this up. I'm not going to read it. I'm just, I'm just not. Like I know what the story's about. I know what it's about and I cannot emotionally handle it. And so to be kind to myself, I'm going to unhaul this. We probably just moved again, but let's just move on from that. That is the only thing that I'm unhauling that is unread. Everything else that I'm unhauling is read. Some because I didn't end up enjoying the series as a whole. And so I've DNF'd the remainder of the series, some just because I didn't like the book in general, some because I just don't feel like keeping them around anymore. Let's just go through these really quickly because there is a heck of shit ton of them. Welcome to Lacos by Chibundo Anuzo, Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier, The Death by Kelly Kaplinger, Cody Kaplinger? Cody Kaplinger. What did I say? Did I say Kelly? It's Cody. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Cruel Crown by Victoria Aveyard. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith. Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Teardrop and Waterfall by Lauren Kate. My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Rosanna Brown. Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. Project by Courtney Summers. Not a Happy Family by Sherry LaPena. These are kind of out of order a little bit. Uh, King's Cage, Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. First Life by Gina Showalter. Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, which I have this tabbed quite a lot. There was a lot in this first book that I really enjoyed and there was a lot in the rest of the books that I did not enjoy and I actually never finished the series and I'm kind of heartbroken about it to be honest with you because I loved this first book so much and I love some of her prose is fantastic. Um, like the thing I had tabbed in um, the novella 
whatever the novella is called I can't even remember from here but the war is not a war at all it is an extermination what's this one I mean they're just the silver war is being paid for in red blood like so many things in here you believe you are the masters of the world but your reign as kings and gods is at an end until you recognize us as humans as equal the fight will be at your door not on a battlefield but in your cities in your streets in your homes you don't see us and so we are everywhere and we will rise up red as the dawn like there are so many great things about the series and it really hurts me that I did not enjoy um the second to last book and I never read the book after that but I ended up skim reading a lot of the third book so it just it hurts it really hurts there was a lot of things I liked and I am destroyed by the fact that I did not get to continue reading it but I mean I could have but I wasn't enjoying it so why hate would I be hate reading a series that I used to love that would be crazy anyway let's move on Wink Poppy Midnight by April Genevieve Tuholke Smoke in the Sun by Renee Adier The Faults in Our Stars by John Green and two left Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer and Lore by Alexandra Bracken that's that's my unhaul my red unhaul because I read a lot of books that I have been have sitting around for a while that I didn't enjoy so let's get rid of them and move on with our lives and have more room for books we love on our shelves. As always, if you enjoy those books, good for you. I'm happy for you. We're all allowed to have our own opinions. So, moving on. So at the bottom of this I wrote new number 112. I don't know if that's what's actually up here or over here. I don't know which side it's on. I can't remember. I don't know if that's the number that's actually up there, but it doesn't matter because that's not the actual number anyway. <laughs> I know, right? It's shock and all. So, I did an actual count at the end of December. I actually did it on like December 31st, January 1st. I might have done January 1st because it was a weekend. I don't know. Anyway, I did a final actual count and at the beginning of this year we are sitting at 116 gosh dang darn unread books on my shelves. 116. Like we've been sitting at 117 for so long and just the distraught to just be like, mm, 116. <sighs> I'm very annoyed by this, but also it is what it is. It's not like I can fix it. So, I mean, I can fix it by reading more things. You know what I mean though. Like I have to actually work at it to fix it. I can't just like magic a new number. So that's what I hauled in December. That's what I read in December. That's what I unhauled in December. And now we have a starting number for January, which is 116. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. Hopefully it's not a full length feature film like my stats and favorites and dislikes. Well, I'm sure that was another camera angle change. Uh, it's been several hours since the last clip that you seen because my battery died and wouldn't you know it, all three batteries were dead. None of them were charged. I don't know who lives their life that dangerously, but obviously it's me. It's been so long, I don't even have the books I was unhauling anymore. That's right, they've been unhauled. Uh, we had a family dinner for my mom's birthday, um, which I cooked a big dinner and had over a couple of my cousins and their families. And one of my cousins works at the library, so she was whisking things off to go to the library for me and I didn't have to do anything. Um, so yes, books are already gone. It has been that long. Anyway, the point was to say the new total is 116. I hope y'all had a wonderful day. I hope y'all had a wonderful 2021. Let's read some books together in 2022. We got a lot going on. Trying to make it less, but still a lot going on. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and player related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.